doing, and this is Throwback Thursday. This is a little weekly series that I do on my YouTube channel where I dig back into my stash of older papers, products, and goodies, and we make something fresh and new. Since it's fall, which is my absolute favorite season of the year, I have pulled out Prima's Hello Pink Autumn. This is either from 2020 or 2021. I'm not sure, I don't see a date on the paper, but I'm thinking it's within the last couple of years, so you might still be able to get this one. This is a gorgeous collection. I bought the A4, and as you can see, it is just lush. And I know a lot of people, look at this great plaid, I know a lot of people don't like pink at autumn, but if you think about autumn sunsets and sunrises, there's a lot of pink and the roses kind of do their thing um, during autumn. They get very, very lush and beautiful. My garden right now is just bursting. My vincas, my impatience, they're beautiful. So this is a lovely collection. I fell in love with it right away, probably because my mom was such a fan of pink, but beautiful images, great patterns that almost read like a solid um this is probably my favorite one and just this wonderful pink grid on the back so that is that you know prima never gives you very many patterns in a collection so you have to find out how to figure out how to make them really uh, look different so i decided we would make a little fall desk Folio. This is kind of a take on my G45 folios that I've been doing all year with a little bit of a change up. First off, we're starting with a six and three quarter by 16 and a half inch sheet of this grocery bag. I get this from envelopes.com and it is 13 by 18. So it's great for a project like this. You don't have to do any paper piecing. So I trimmed it to six and three quarters by 16 and a half and I scored it at three and a half, seven, and 14 to create an easel card. So this little flap that's gonna be left on the bottom is your pocket. We're gonna start, let's go ahead, get this lined on the inside. And this is, I wanna say this is a six, just under six and three quarters. Yes, it's six and five eighths by, I believe it's five, of this soft, soft pink. It's almost a blush. It looks beautiful with the patterns in this collection, and we're gonna glue this down right here inside the card. And I have painted all my edges with um, brown paint and spattered them just to kind of add that vintagey fall feel. Then this is the pattern paper from the collection that I've cut slightly smaller. And this is gonna go right here. So I've made a couple of little pocket gussets. That's just folded pieces of paper that we glue to the sides of our pocket. And we're gonna flip this up. It's just so much easier to do that before, add the liner before we add our, so there's our card base, okay? So now we're gonna make a hidden pocket on the bottom. And I want the opening for my hidden pocket to be on the right. So I have cut a seven and one eighth by seven and seven eighths inch piece of the same soft pink cardstock. And I've scored a half an inch on the left and half an inch on the top and the bottom. Then I trimmed out the corners and this is going to be my hidden pocket on the bottom. So I'm just placing my adhesive on these flaps. And I'm gonna flip my card like this and flip my hidden pocket like this. Burnish everything down. Oops, make sure I'm straight here. Everything's always harder to do on camera because you can't put your head in the way. And I've, I'm trying to keep this right in the center of frame, which is actually a little further away from myself than I normally work. So now you can see, here's your hidden pocket. Now, when I cut up 
my base from that great big piece of grocery bag, I had another nice chunk of paper left. So I cut this, this was 16 and 7 eighths by six and one quarter, and I scored this at five and three quarters and 11 and a half to make a little tri-fold folio that will go inside. And I've used different papers from the collection. The liners uh, for the larger panels are five and a half by six and a quarter. All right, and I just fussy cut this image from the paper collection. You have to keep this kind of flat. You can't do a lot of dimensional embellishments. Here I took a couple of pieces of my scrap paper, added a gusset to one, overlapped it with this great sweater print to make a pocket. And then I cut from the patterned paper this pretty, pretty grateful hearts. This is six inches and I went eight and a half, scored it in half to make a little folio. So you've got room here for journaling. These are the rub-ons that come with the collection and I'll link all of this um, on the supply list on my blog, which I will link in the description box below. And then you've got room for a photo here and room for a photo here. And you can actually fit more photos into the pocket if you like. So your center panel, you need to cut a little uh, less wide than that five and a half by six and a quarter, because you wanna make sure you clear your folds. And then this short one is just uh, slightly larger than five by slightly smaller than six and a quarter. And here I just fussy cut one of the little images from the foiled paper and glued that down. So this is gonna live inside this hidden pocket. Isn't that nice? I love these, I love the hidden pocket thing. All right, so now open your card back up and you're going to cut liners from that same pale pink these are just a tick over six and a half by three and three eighths. And I was trying to conserve paper, which is what I always, that's always a goal. I like to use things up. So this one is a whole piece and it goes right up here at the top. And then I cut a liner from the plaid that is six and three eighths by just under three and a quarter. And that's gonna go over that. Just like this. And you could add more of those rub-ons here. You can add a blank sentiment panel. You can do more fussy cutting. So then down here, here's where I was paper piecing. I had the right width, but not the right height. So I'm gonna put my, my way too short piece down first. Right here. And straight is always good. Here we go. And then I'm gonna put the larger piece, overlap that over the top, just like that. Super easy. Then I had more of this pretty sweater print. I love this sweater print. Makes me feel all cozy. I fussy cut out, I'm just gonna finish fussy cutting this. I want it to look a little more um, along the top. So I fussy cut this out from the A4 pad. And I left a little flap. And I'm gonna tuck this behind this little piece. And then put this down right here. Oops. Straight is good if you can do it. There we go, whoops, oh, that was the problem. All right, so that goes there. Yep, all right. Then I wanna bring in our sweater paper. I tell you what, I'm gonna trim just a little bit more off of this. It's a little too tall. See, I just took like a little 
might do one more of these. So maybe a sixteenth of an inch. I trimmed it down. And you can you can judge. This goes right here. Yeah, that's much better. And then our little flap comes over. And I'm going to fill in this little gap with about a one quarter inch piece. Just like that. And you can see if you line it, when you line it up, really you cannot tell. So that's cute. Then down here on this pocket, I've got this pretty uh, pink grid. And again, this was a scrap. And this is a little under six and three quarters inches wide. And our pocket, I think, is two and a half. And then I took the pink leaf pattern and I cut these to a width, to a height rather of an inch. I'm going to put one down like this and then I'm going to come in and put the other one down. All right. So I'm going to show you how to use rub-ons. Rub-ons have been around for a long time, but they kind of went out of favor for a while. They come on a sheet like this. It's sort of a, a translucent sheet backed with a solid. So what I usually do is trim around with my scissors to get the section that I want. And then this just peels off. You throw this away. And I've cut a piece of paper that my sentiment's going to fit on. And I'm going to put it at a little bit of an angle just for fun. And then you just kind of press it down. And you can use a popsicle stick, you can use one of these bone folders, and you just rub. That's why they're called rub bonds. And you can kind of hear the text separating. And you can lift it and see what you've got. I can see I need to work on my exclamation point, and mine shifted just a little bit. And I don't have quite all of this. There, look at there. So there's a rub on. And then there was a little leaf in this corner. I'm just going to trim this out. I'm going to fit it in right here. You have to use pretty good pressure. And there's almost a tacky on the, the back so it's not super slick. So there's a rub on. And now we can take this. Okay, I need to trim it a little bit. A little too tall. And before I put that down, I'm just going to ink around the edges to get rid of that hard. There you go. There's a rub on. That's kind of fun. See, here's the little knitting. Let's put this down right here. And this is the cool thing because this overlays and the rub-on is opaque. Isn't that 
that fun. It kind of makes like a, a subtle tone on tone right there. So that's cool. So that's rub-ons. You still have room to put a wee photo right here. Then in this pocket, I find all my stuff here. I cut a six and a quarter by 11 inch piece of this pink paper, scored it in half at five and a half, cut out this pretty fall image from the 12 by 12. I have 12 by 12 these that have the gold foil. It was like a rose gold foil. So we're gonna, we're gonna dress this up. On the top, I cut six by five and a quarter, just a tick over five and a quarter of the of our plaid that we like. And then I took from the A4 pad, I think it's an A4 pad. I think that's what they call it. Anyway, the, the one that's like eight and a half by 11. And I cut out the little give thanks sentiment, scored three eighths of an inch on the left hand side to create a little tip in. So you can put photo here and photo here. And then down on the bottom, I did the same size for the sweater print, but then I took a piece of I want to say this was six inches wide and I trimmed it to the five and a quarter inches tall, scored half inch behind each one to make a little gate fold. Then again, from that A4 pad, matted this on pink paper. And this makes like a little gate fold album, which is really sweet. And that's going to go down on the bottom. Of course, you can finish these out any way you like. You don't have to do what I'm doing. But these are just ideas for you to use as springboards. You can use whatever collection you like. You can use, you know, whatever size base you like. I just thought this was a kind of a fun size. So then this is going to go in our inside pocket, just like that. And put it in there so that it's centered. Okay. The pockets are tight the first couple of times you put things in and out, but then they loosen up. So here we are with our easel front. Move this out of the way. I cut a six and a half by six and three quarter inch piece of this copper metallic. And then I stitched this six and a quarter by six and a half fall hugs. This is from this 12 by 12 sheet with the foil embossing on it. Then I took a piece of this brown tartan ribbon and laid it down the side with um, score tape. I just want to show you very quickly how I set up this shaker element. This is a Rene Bouquet's frame. It's this gorgeous tree. I just love this. And the first thing I did was heat emboss it with Stampendous Chunky Metallic Seasonings Embossing Enamel. This is just a whole bunch of different shades of like from very light gold to very dark gold so I tapped it with my clear embossing pad and then put my embossing powder over it and emboss it and this was very very shiny so I wanted to bring down that shine I went into my stash and I found this moon shadow mist which is all these shades of blue and you know how fall, there's a particular shade of blue. So I spritzed it with that. And it's it's all very subtle now. It's all kind of blended together. But I spritzed it with that. And then I came in with alcohol inks and tapped in some yellows and greens and oranges and reds. Just all real, real subtle. And the very last thing I did to take down the shine was I put just a dot of this burnt sienna deco art media fluid acrylic and i just tapped it on very 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 lightly with my finger to take down the shine then i measured my acrylic card stock that came with the hello pink autumn kit and um put that down with score tape and put three rows of my scrapbook.com adhesive eighth inch foam strips and i'll link all of this stuff in the blog so that you can find it easily. 
Then I went ahead and cut a four and three quarter by five and three quarter inch piece of this plaid paper from the paper collection. And I put all my shaker elements in there. I've got beads and buttons and leaves and sequins. I've got some gaudy girl uh, glitter glass. I've got all kinds of goodies in there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do the finishing touch. We're going to take the top layer of foam strips off our frame. So now we're going to line this up with our cut paper panel. There we go. And then just press it firmly in place. And then I like to double check it, go around and double check, make sure I don't have any holes or gaps because those little sequins, they're like mice. They can get in through a really tiny spot. But look how pretty that is. This is a really beautiful shaker. I love the combination of the um, decorated acetate with the chipboard and the shaker elements. So I just wanted you to see kind of how that came together. All right. So this is not the focal. The shaker box that I showed you how I made earlier is the focal. And we're going to glue this down so that it's kind of centered up between the ribbon and this side. And these are heavy, so I put a fair bit of adhesive down. Then I tied a bow with my brown tartan ribbon. I'm going to tuck this right here. So pretty. It's starting to feel like fall. And I'm just fluffing up the bow. Sometimes when you tie, the ends get a little creased and flat, so I stick my finger or a pencil in the loop and refresh them so that they're nice and bouncy. Look how pretty that is, y'all. Before we go any further, I want to show you how to alter these little acorn bits from Renee Bouquets. They're the sweetest things. I'm using Gathered Twigs Distress Ink and an and a ink applicator. And I'm just coming in and sponging the ink on. And you can go extra heavy on the top to create the difference in the hue. So pretty. So you can go lighter on the bottom. If you wanted green acorns, you could um, totally use like peeled paint or something like that. You could even come in and layer some peeled paint on over this if you wanted to. But this just takes a second and they look so neat. And then what I like to do, and this is the cool thing about Renee's um, chipboard, a lot of chipboard, in my experience, if you get it wet, you're in trouble. Um, it's going to like fall apart. But Renee's is really special. And I find I'm able to do little things like this that kind of take the altering process to the next level where I can tap into water. Of course, you don't want to soak these in water. Uh, then you would get some separation. But you can kind of tap them. And then and I've got these little pumpkins. I'm going to, these little felt pumpkins. I don't know what these came with. I've had them forever. I know they're Prima but I'm not sure what collection they came with. They're either Hello Pink Autumn or they're one of the other Autumn collections, but I also like to alter these so they're not quite so perfect and new looking. So press those in. And I have a beige one. This is gonna look really pretty with this card. These are gonna be part of our stopper element.
going to bring this in. We're going to finish this off. I'm going to put some hot glue down. A baker's twine bow. That's going to go right on top. Like that. I love these little Tim Holtz scissors. I'll link them. I like them because they are... Nothing sticks to them. I don't like them for cutting as much, but these little ones make a great tool for flower arranging and that sort of thing. They come in real handy. And then I wanna take, this is Renee Bouquet's. These are her beautiful roses. This is a fall, I'm, I wanna say this is a fall uh, pink. I'll look it up. I'll make sure I link everything on the blog. So if you want the little squigglies, this little pick is a great tool, or you can use a paintbrush, you know, like a skinny paintbrush handle if you're afraid of the sharp edge on the pick. You do have to be mindful of it. And you just coil, and then you can pull this out. So you've got like those little tendrils that come down, which is so pretty. And I'm gonna put this one right here my bow going the way I want my bow to go. There we go. All right, like this little sage kind of picks up on the green in the background. So I'm gonna tuck this in right here like this. Yeah. That was the way to go. All right, put that acorn there. That acorn right there. And then this little one I'm gonna tuck in between. And you can see how dipping these into the ink gave them a just a softer finish. I really like the way that turned out. Taking the sweater weather sentiment, which I do like. I think it kind of finishes it. It kind of balances out the tree and works with the tree. So I'm gonna put a little hot glue down here. There we go. Now that's finished. Oh, I like that a lot, you guys. You can see I've glued my cover onto the front flap here. And the way I do that is I put my glue down actually on the grocery bag so I don't run the risk of gluing over my hinge. And now we just need to finish our little arrangement down here. So I'm gonna bring in these little pumpkins. So sweet. I want this one to go this way, like that. So I'm kind of tipping it at an angle. And I want this one, let's see. Let's take our pink rose. Yeah, and let's put that down here. Like that. And then let's take one of our sage flowers and tuck it in, and smoosh it in. Put this little pink pumpkin. I'm putting the glue on the side so that it will stand this way. Sweet. That is really sweet. All right. There we go. And then I've got a brown leaf. There we go. And I've got my bow.
nice. I'll fuss that bow a little bit more in a bit. I'm going to take these two little sage flowers and tuck them in. I've twisted them together. I'm going to tuck them right into here like this. And then the last thing that we need is one of our brown gardenias. Just gonna kind of smoosh it. Tuck it right in like that. Boy, is that ever pretty. All right, and then I saw a sentiment on the chipboard that I really liked. This little one that says, give hugs. Let's put it, yeah, let's put it right there. All right. I think, folks, that does it. But wow, this is beautiful. I've been dying to use this frame for a long, long time. It is, I hope the camera picks up all the little subtle shades of color in the autumn leaves. And then we've got this great shaker element. This is a sweet card. So that is it for me, Kathy Clement, Kathy by Design. Happy Throwback Thursday. Go get your craft on, bye.